we talked about Asteya, which is the third yama. And what I want to remind you of is that remember from the beginning that every yama can not um, cannot actually exist if we violate the previous yama, right? So in conjunction with one thing building on top of the other and knowing this, we find a steya, which actually means um, to refrain from stealing. It means non-stealing. A steya, steya means stealing. Us means um, refrain from, not doing, right? So if you were in steya, if, if I said steya, you would be stealing. But a steya means non-stealing, okay? And what that means is that you must never take anything that doesn't belong to you. And that is something that's very important because we think that there are certain things that it's okay to take because you're not hurting anyone, right? Let me give you an example of not being in a stea. Let's say you work at an office and your boss comes in and um, your boss comes in and maybe he's got some, some um, what are those called, um, sticky notes, right? And they've got them there and they're for you to use while you're here at the office or for work, work that you've got to do. Now, but you know your kids need some for school so you open the drawer and you take a couple. And you think nothing of it because you work hard and things like that, right? And you deserve it, right? But that's stealing. Taking something without asking prior permission is stealing. If it's not used to the benefit, let me give you an example. Today I made some copies so that I could share with you guys, and you guys can also take one of these because this is the other side, but I made them to share with you guys, but I made them on the paper that was provided for me by the college. Now, if I make copies and I take them and I don't use them for you guys, then I'm, I'm stealing, aren't I not? Because I'm not using it for you guys. Does that make sense? Yes. So I have to remember those things. Am I really using them to the benefit of my students for what they were meant for? And so often we think, oh, it's okay. I'll just, you know, take it. And it doesn't work that way because let me tell you, even though it may not mean a big difference to the pocket of the person, it means a big difference to the universe. Because what you are saying right here, all actions and inactions have an effect on your life circumstances. What you are saying to the universe when you take something like that is, I'm I'm going to take this because I don't trust that, that I'm going to have enough money to buy my own. That's what you're saying to the universe. And the universe takes that and says, okay, I got that. I understand that here. That's what you want more of. I'll give you more of that. Here, more opportunity to feel like you don't have. More opportunity to feel like you've got to take without without um, asking, more opportunity to feel confined, more opportunity to feel controlled, because those are the feelings that are happening to us when we steal. And we don't realize that. You see, because if we were, now let me tell you, now let's go back all the way to the first yama, okay? What was the first yama? It was ahimsa, right? Yes. All right, and it says, what does it say? It says, always act in consideration 
to others, yes? Mm -hmm. If I take it, am I acting in consideration to others? No, so now I've already not just violated the third yama, but I've violated the first yama. Now, what's the second one? Satya, right? Which is tell the truth all the time. If I take that without telling anybody, am I telling the truth? No, now I violated yama number two. What about yama number three? I'm totally violating that. I violated three yamas. Any way you look at it, I violated the, the secrets of having a successful business because what you do will always be done to you tenfold. Tenfold. And we don't realize it, but we pay back a lot of things that we don't realize it. Right? If there's something going on in your life that something, you know, something bad, it's probably because there was a, a situation that maybe perhaps you took advantage of many moons ago. And when we don't go in there and do that inner work and rectify things, guess what? We carry around that energy and we attract that energy. Right? And we forget that if we think that if we take an action, then we got we know that if we take an action, we've got ramifications. So sometimes we're too scared to take an action, so we don't do anything. But not doing anything, taking an inaction is a decision. I decided not to. What happens if you decide to hide from the bill collectors and not pay your bills. You get more bills, isn't it true? It's like, oh my God. Well, the law of divine compensation continues to work. Whatever you divinely put out there, you will divinely get compensated back. And we don't realize that. We don't realize that. And so the beauty about these yamas is remember, I want, I want you to think about this. Why is she telling us this again? Because I'm sharing to you the knowledge that was shared to the wealthy and well-to-do because once they knew these laws and they followed them, they would have successful businesses. Because if you follow all these laws, you are going to be divinely compensated. If you go out and your first and, and your first foremost priority is to help somebody, you're going to be helped yourself. Right? And that's really important for us. It's really important for us. Now let's think about a time when we took even a pen, a pen. And I know that pins have a tendency to walk away, but when I, I make a conscious effort that if I pick up a pen, the next time I go back, I put one back of equal or better quality. Because I picked it up, oh shoot, I carried, you know, I walked away without a pen, right? And, and we do that all the time. Can I borrow your pen? Can I borrow your pencil? And you walk away with it. So then, I remember these laws and then the law of divine compensation reminds me and then I think, okay, she lent me a pen, I gotta go back. And so I buy a new one. And then I give it back to her. You know, the other day I walked away with your pen. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes we walk away and it's like, where'd this come from, right? But if you have no knowledge of it, if you have absolutely no knowledge, but you know that that's not yours, then you must make amends in our energy. So you look at that and then you draw to yourself, you come into the meditative pose and you draw to yourself and you say, to the owner of which I do not know, of this pin, this, this phone, how many of us find phones out there? Anybody ever found a phone? Right, to the owner of this phone out there, to the owner of this 